Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and I have got a bunch of emails on repairing this snapper, problems with snappers, and uh, I just got a video from Mike and he's apparently picked up an older snapper. His boots are ripped so you can see his hex shaft and he says when I turn this tire the hex shaft doesn't turn. Let me get you a little closer. He says the hex shaft doesn't turn. Well, that's typical because of the differential is turning. You can see these small gears in here. And all that's doing is it turns the tire on the other side the opposite direction. So if it's doing that, everything in your gears are okay. Now if you can hold this tire and turn this one, well first you got to put it in neutral. I got a block of wood I can shove in here. It should turn the drivetrain. If you can turn it hard enough. Now <clears throat> If you're turning this, you're holding this tire, and that doesn't turn your drivetrain, something in here is broke. It could be your chain. It could be this chain in your chain case. It could be this short axle. This is, was the axle that was on my 33 inch that I rebuilt. If you can see inside of here, you can see down in here, you'll see this short axle. This is my bad one. It has no teeth at all left on it. Now another thing that could be stripped out is this large gear. They call this a 63 tooth gear or the small gear on the bottom. I guess I better drop you down a little. There's a small gear down here that meshes into this big one. This is all part of the gear reduction to get this thing to go slower from your 3000 RPMs off your motor down to your what 12 mile an hour ground speed in fifth gear. I've had these where this one was totally stripped right off clean, just like this one is. Uh, what, what does that is excessive torque. People try to do too much with these. Uh, I've heard they even have a snowplow blade you can put on these things. That puts an awful strain on your drivetrain. I've got another guy that just bought one and he wants to put a new engine on it. And he said the Briggs & Stratton dealer in his area either offers a 10 horse or a 17 horse. Now 10 horse on a 33 inch machine is kind of underpowered. But a 17 horse, that's a lot of horsepower. Now <clears throat> if that's the only one you can get, what you can do to help this is where I rebuilt mine. I don't know if I can turn this. You can see inside of here these small set of cluster gears. This is what makes your differential work. This is a standard residential machine. It has brass bushings and has four little gears. A commercial machine has bearings, it has eight gears inside of here. Now that will cut the stress on these axle gears in half by having these eight gears. And when I put my uh, 33 inch together, I tore two machines apart, so I had extra gears. So I ordered this large gear with all the extra holes that were drilled and tapped. 
I put all eight gears on there. I figured I got them, might as well use them. Uh, on the 17 horse engine, some engines will even say 17 horsepower at 3000 RPM. <clears throat> So if you're a little afraid of using all that horsepower, don't run your engine at top speed. Cut the horse or cut the RPMs back, that'll drop your horsepower down. Now, something you might want to think about. And then if you do get into heavy leaves and all you're doing is sucking leaves, you can kick your RPMs up. You'll have more horsepower to throw the leaves in the bagger for you and your chute might not plug up. Mine does once in a while, no matter what I do, because I have a catoba tree. And the leaves on that tree are about the size of a paper plate. Plus it has beans that are about a foot and a half long that are full of seeds. And uh, when you get your second or third frost, every one of them leaves will fall in a day. So now you got paper plate sized leaves a foot deep on the ground. And it, it really tends to plug these things up. Now your chain case. <clears throat> uh, Mike, I, I mentioned to you a video I had online to check to see what's wrong with your drivetrain without tearing it apart. You can put something in here or block your clutch up and turn your clutch disc. Seems like mine's still in. And if your hex tube turns, then everything in here is probably okay. There's not much in this chain case outside of a, a chain and two sprockets. A large one and a small one. And again, this is part of your gear reduction to slow your RPMs down before it gets to your tires. And the same over here. If you can turn your clutch and your axe and your tires are turning, then pretty much everything is okay in here. If you're turning your clutch disc, your hex shaft is turning, but your tires aren't, then you got a problem inside your differential. Either your chain is broke or you've stripped out one of these gears. Now I have a lot of emails. And I want to try and answer some of them, if I can find them. Uh, too many. Uh, I'm getting anywhere from 20 to 25 emails a day. And I really try to answer them all. But a lot of them are just the same questions with the same problems. So sometimes some of these problems, you just too hard to answer on an email. Even over the phone, it's kind of hard unless you can actually see what I'm talking about so you know what to fix. Uh, this guy's got a busted chain in his differential and his boots are bad. So he wants to know if he should replace a chain in his chain case while he's got it tore apart. I would say open your chain case up at the minimum and get all that snapper lube out of there that's probably dried up by now and check out your chain. If it's got this much slop, it's stretched out and yeah, go ahead and replace it. And I would refill it well, I'd say you can refill it with whatever you think is best. Personally, I use 8090 gear loop. Now, I had one guy email me and want to know how to get his chain case apart. This is about the easiest thing to fix on the snapper, and it's pretty easy to get it apart. First thing you're going to want to do is take your boots off on each side of the chain case. Just take the clamps off. Then you want to go around to this side of the machine, opposite of your differential. 
take these bolts out that hold the, the fender, they call these fenders, on the side of the machine. You got to take your tire and your wheel flange off. Now if this thing is frozen on here and you can't get a wheel puller on it and heat won't do it, you're going to have to cut it off. I have a video that shows how to do that so you can reuse this. And a quick tip, when you cut this, I cut right down this flange with a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. And they have some new ones that are a little thicker. They're fiber reinforced and they won't break on you. I cut right down here until I hit the shaft. And I get as close up to this flange as I can. And I keep the smaller diameter wheels and I put them on so I can get closer to this flange. You stick a big screwdriver in here and you twist it. It'll open this up and nine times out of ten it will slide off. Now if you cut it 90 degrees to this bolt, you can put it back on, tighten the bolt up, and it'll repinch it to the shaft and you can reuse this without buying a new one. So you want to get this off. If you have this plastic dust cap, you want to just unloosen the hose clamp take that off. Then at this point you can slide the fender off. Inside here there's not much you have to do on the chain case. <clears throat> Once you got these boots loosened and off, there'll be one cable going to the chain case for the brake. This has a band brake, it's an older style. The newer ones have this little foot brake that's in here. And the cable will be going down to this. To unhook that one cable, you're going to have to wiggle this out of your yoke and it will slide right off. Now let me spin you around and I'll show you the chain case. Okay, this is a chain case off. This is an old style that I designed after a Comet. Back then the Comets didn't have the slipping clutch like the new ones do. That's why I got the idea of bolting my clutches solid so they don't slip on you anymore. But there are some things you want to try before you do that. There's springs in there you can tighten up to put more pressure between your clutch disc and your drive disc. You may not have to bolt it solid. It is a little dangerous. If you have kids, if you let that clutch out too fast, you're going to be popping wheelies with this thing. There again, that's going to put unnecessary stress on all these parts and you could break chains or strip gears. So try the springs first. Big nut in the center, you take that off. There's two washers in here. They're cupped. They kind of look like a, a bowl. They're cupped this way. You put the cup side up. Pull your... This is your clutch assembly. Take that off. There's 10 screws around the outside of this. You take them out. There's a quarter inch nut and bolt assembly on the bottom that holds the brake shoe on that goes inside of the new style clutches. This style does not have that brake on it. This style has a real brake that works and it's a band brake that grabs onto a brake drum more or less like your cars. Now you're going to want to take a flat bladed screwdriver, tap it into this crack and work it around twisting it so you don't bend your case. That cork gasket really seals. Then these just slide right off. The only thing in here besides all that crappy grease you're going to have to clean out is two sprockets in your chain. This chain is pretty wore out. Now to get this chain out of here and the sprockets, you'll have to take the brake off if your machine has one. The newer ones, they don't have this brake. Both of these sprockets will have to be pulled out at the same time because the chain does not flex sideways. These are your plastic bushings. These measure about 375 thousandths. 
these are very tight you get this together I have I have no side play in mind in this case now again I've mentioned when you take these covers off both of these covers and the differential cover hold up to the light and look for little uh, holes uh, some of them have holes ripped through from the stamping process I don't know if they had bad dyes or if they fig thought you had to have a vent hole in them it just lets the oil run out the ones that I find that I rebuild I weld that hole shut very simple to do if you don't have a welder maybe a neighbor does or go to a welding shop all they have to do is tack that hole on the outside most of them won't even charge you my welder does uh, we just bought a machine for the shop but when I went to the welder that we used to hire when he'd do little jobs like this he'd get five or six of them done he's okay you owe me a 12 pack of beer I said hey, that works for me so these are very simple to take apart and get off now how to get the differential off there's two ways you can do it let's spin back around now <clears throat> you can do it the same way take this fender off just like I said to get off the chain case you got the chain case off you got this side taken apart now what you want to do is you take the six bolts off this fender leave these in right now and you're gonna on your machine you're gonna have a series of bolts going around here that I don't have because this has been cut away for model use so I don't even remember how many's in here there's one two three four there's four left I got an empty hole that'd be five six seven eight nine I'm guessing there's probably was eight of them in there I, I don't know you want to take these six bolts off some of your machines have a brace right here that braces the tube that your bagger hangs on and there's a bolt that comes up through the bottom of that brace you can leave that on once you get the bolt out of it you take this fender you twist it it'll come out from under here and you can pull this whole assembly right out now if you want to leave the tire on leave this flange on take these six bolts out turn this thing pull this assembly out you can set it on your bench on the tire and it'll just stand there for you you, you won't have to try to balance it I've done that a lot and wiggle you back up here now once you get this out on the bench you're gonna to want to take all these screws out and I'm guessing like I said there was probably eight of them around here holding this cover on this cover has been cut away so I can look in here take the cover off you're gonna find out there was a mess in there you got to clean out now on the outside along with these eight screws there's a bolt right here I believe it's a 5 16 bolt this one's loose on the inside it'll have a cone shaped washer again like a bowl underneath that washer between the frame and that washer is an o-ring that's what sorry I hit the camera that's what keeps oil from leaking out around this bowl the same on this side there'll be one of them cupped washers and another o-ring that way nothing leaks out around here take this bowl out and then the uh, fender will come off of the differential now if you don't want to go that route and Mike was talking about he's got a problem in here he thinks the chains broke <clears throat> you can leave this all together and just take the differential off you want to take off this clamp for the boot these six bolts and you'll have to take off the tire on this side and the wheel flange 
And when you pull this out, everything will come off with the exception of this tube. Now before you pull this off of here, you got to take these eight bolts off and this bolt. This will pull off your, your differential cover will stay here and your tube will stay here. But this fender and the guts and this long shaft is your other axle. That will slide right out. Then you can put this on the bench and clean it and replace the parts you need to. And while this is hanging here, you can wipe some of that crap out of there. Now let me check to see what other questions that I had. Okay, I had a question on slop and end plate back and forth. Not slop on the bushing itself, but you have slop in two different directions on these snappers. You'll have it this way. Now this doesn't have much at all because I made a brass bushing to go in here. I had a, a viewer ask me if he could put a steel washer in here instead of the nylon ones they make that just snap in. I suppose you could put the steel washer in, but you'd want to make sure you put a nylon bushing or nylon uh, washer on both sides of the steel washer so you don't wear the end of your tube bolt or you don't wear the bushing any worse than it already is. That's what's giving you your end, end plate. Your bushings are wearing. And them little nylon uh, spacers, you can put them on by just taking your boot loose, pulling it back, and snapping them on, putting your boot back on. That's very simple to take care of that, and it's very important. If you get too much side play on this drivetrain, what's going to happen is this is going to move back and forth, and it's going to eat a hole right through your case. That's why I picked this case to cut open. It was wore to the point where it was ready to break through because of all the excessive play. So if you're going to use a steel washer, protect the other parts from wear with them little nylon spacers and then kind of keep your eye on them. By greasing this, that'll help get grease onto them washers and help them to turn. Okay, the next one is about he can't get the wheel flange off. I told you how to slit it, pop that off. And uh, replacing his chain if he thinks it's worn. If it's as bad as this one, <laughs> yeah, you might as well replace it now that you got it tore down. Because I wouldn't trust that. It might not. It might last another ten years. You don't know. But at this point, I would put a new chain on it. Because if it gets much worse, then it's going to wear your sprockets out, and you're going to have to replace everything in here. Okay. The next question was from David from Minnesota, and hey, thanks for telling me where you're from because I'm keeping track, and I haven't had Minnesota yet. Uh, he was asking about the chain case and what steps you have to go through to get it off. Well, that was in the beginning. If you have any other questions and I went too fast, email me back. And while, I, while we're on the subject, if I could spit that out. <clears throat> um, if you email me and ask me a question, I'll email you back and answer you. Then I delete the email because I have too many. I have, like I said, 25 a day coming in. Um, if you email me back again for another part of the same question or a different question, especially if it's another part of the same question, tell me what the question was because I don't know. And I, it, I have trouble just keeping all the names straight. I have so many of these that, that I'm trying to answer. But this one was on steps on how to get the chain case off. 
Okay, this one is from Don in Florida. Oh, I'd like to be there right now, wouldn't you? He wants to know the difference between having four or eight gears inside of here. And like I said, it's going to reduce the stress on these two axles by 50% by putting eight gears in here instead of four. Now, if you never had a problem with that, these 28-inch machines, I've never had a problem with it. Uh, typically, what wears the most is this big gear. It will, uh, it just takes the teeth right off it. I did have a viewer send me a picture in of this gear where it sheared the teeth right off it. And then when it got to the point where it started slipping, you know, we sometimes we just don't want to fix things right away and was, well, I'll get it later type of thing. It got to the point where it was so bad, it destroyed this gear too. And these aren't cheap. These are about 80 bucks. I think I paid for the one I put in mine. But that was because it had all the holes drilled and tapped to put in eight of these gears. They're a more expensive gear. I don't know what these are with the four holes. Uh, but if you got the parts, it's not going to hurt them. Uh, one of the machines I tore apart was a residential machine with four gears, but it had eight holes in it. So, and what they did is they took a drill and they drilled one hole out to remove the threads so I couldn't use it. But now, if you find one that's got all the holes drilled and tapped in it, definitely throw the extra gears in there if you have them. It's just going to help the... Uh, machine down the road. Let's see what else we got. Okay, here's another one on uh, a guy wrote in and he told me that uh, his machine wasn't going in fifth gear so he put a new drive disc on thinking that might help and after he did that his clutch cables are loose uh, and he wondered if that was a problem. Not really. Uh, when you replace your drive disc it doesn't have to swing in as far to hit. Let me let me do that again. When you replace your clutch disc, it doesn't have to swing in as far to hit your drive disc. So that's going to make your cable a little loose. And he said the pedals wiggle. It doesn't matter. As long as when you push the pedal in, it opens the clutch up enough where you can shift it, you're okay. If it doesn't, on your pedals, I don't know how good you can see this. The pedals on the machines have holes in them up here at the top edge. And your cables that come up through your tube have little, I think they call them ferrules or spacers. There'll be like three or four of them on there. You pull your rubber pad off your steel brake or clutch pedal. And you take some of them ferrules and you shove them through the hole on the pedal. That in turn makes the cable shorter and it will tighten it up and it won't be so floppy if you don't like that. And the same on the brake. As your brake pad or this brake shoe wears or if you have this style in the brake uh, band is wearing, your pedal is going to become loose. Just stick some more of them little ferrules through, and it in turn makes the cable shorter. It'll bring the pedal up higher, and it'll be stiffer for you. But if everything's working okay, don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt a thing. Let's see what else we got on here. Okay, I got an email on here. A gentleman put a new belt on his mower deck. Now, I, I've just described how to do that. You have to loosen the clamp up. I can turn this thing. Uh, my clamp's not on here. Let me raise this camera. Sorry, but I work alone and I don't have a cameraman. The clamp is up here. It clamps that tube that goes up to the front end. Uh, should show that on this paper. When I just head out for the pedals. Here's the tube 
that goes up through here from the front. Now, when you move that tube to tighten up your belt, it also affects the length of the cables. Now, when he put his new belt on, and <clears throat> when, you, uh, when you put it on, you want to engage your mower deck. Then you pull or push the tube to get that one inch distance between the pulley, the idler pulley on the bracket that the engaging arm is hooked onto, and the other side of the belt, you want one inch in there. That sets the tension on the spring so the blade don't slip. Once you get that set, you lock down that clamp. Now you may have to readjust your pedal cables. He wrote in and said, man, these things are really loose. I think he even sent me a video or something and moved the pedals back and forth. There again, you can put them little ferrules through the pedal, which will shorten up the cable. But if your brake is working okay, your clutch is working okay, some of these had what they called a clutch brake and a brake pedal. The clutch brake, lower you back down here. The clutch brake, when you push the clutch pedal in, of course it, it does this. But I don't know if you can see this little brake shoe inside of this clutch assembly. When you push it halfway down, it release, releases the clutch from the drive disc. If you push it all the way down, that applies the brake shoe on the inside of the clutch assembly. On my tractor, I took that thing off. So it's strictly a clutch pedal. My brake pedal activates this brake. Some machines only have one pedal, and they have this type of a brake. The cable does the same thing as my clutch brake cable did. It pushes halfway in, it pulls, it pulls the drive disc away. Push it all the way down and it applies this brake. You have to keep your eye on these brakes because they do wear. And uh, then what will happen is you push your brake one day and it's going to gouge into here and it's going to stop you like right now. So if you're moving at any speed, maybe down a hill, full bags, and that happens, you could break a chain. Or you could strip out a gear. So keep your eye on these brake pads in here. Let's see if we got anything else. I think that's it. The rest of them are all just duplicates of what we just went over. So if you were any of these people that wanted questions answered, I'm going to send you an email telling you to watch this video. If you have any other questions about the same question, send me a new email, but remind me what the question is because I just get too many. I've jumped, I'm up to about 525. Four or five days ago I had 400. I'm, I'm getting about 25 a day, which it's not no big deal. It's not that hard to answer a question. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I've had a lot of guys, uh, when they sent me an email, they said, man, I just came across you on YouTube, and yours is the best ones. Well, I don't know if mine are the best or not, but I try to explain things the best I can. But to help someone else find these videos like you did, I need subscribers. So if you've been on my channel and you like what you see, subscribe to it. Then when you push that word that says subscribe, a little bell is going to show up. If you don't want to be bothered every time I put a video on, don't touch that bell. You'll never know I'm putting videos on. If you want to watch them, touch that bell. You'll be notified. I don't know how they notify you. I, I just get a little notification. It'll just be a little, a little star when I turn on my, my uh, channel. 
and it'll tell me I have notifications of the people that I'm subscribed to. Uh, I probably subscribed to 70 people or better and give them videos a thumbs up. Now, when somebody's looking and searching for a video to help them fix something, this big, huge computer, when you say, uh, I need help with my snapper, it's going to go and search for how many subscribers a certain video has, how many thumbs up it has, and how many views it has. It's going to take them, and that's the ones it's going to send to them. So if, if you think this is a good channel and you'd like other people to find it, hit them buttons. It doesn't cost you a thing. If you don't have a YouTube channel, or if you don't uh, never been subscribed to a YouTube channel before, it's going to ask you to fill out an email address. And all that's for is just so you can be notified, if you want to be, that more videos have come up from your subscriber. So fill them out. It doesn't cost you a thing. It just helps other people find these shows. And it lets you know when there's more of them on. So that's it. This is getting pretty long. If you need anything, send me an email and I'll get back with you. And uh, I guess... Work safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you soon.